abnormal meiosis. So recall a karyotype is a photographic inventory of an individual's chromosomes, so essentially just the layout of the chromosomes within one of a person's cells. And a human karyotype usually has 22 pairs of autosomes and then one pair of sex chromosomes, creating the total of 23 pairs. When there is an alteration in chromosome number, it can happen through what's called a non-disjunction event. And essentially what that is, is during the process of meiosis, um, what was supposed to happen with the chromosomes in terms of them separating during anaphase doesn't happen the way it normally does. So non-disjunction error in the chromosome separation, it can happen during anaphase one or anaphase two. This picture is for anaphase one. And this one is showing here that the homologous pairs, we have these two pairs here, one was supposed to go to one side, one was supposed to go to the other side during anaphase one of meiosis. Um, but if that doesn't happen, they both end up on the same side. So then the resulting cells end up with a different number of chromosomes. This one here got both of that chromosome, and this one here got none of that chromosome. And so the two cells that result from the left-hand side division end up with not being exactly haploid because they're, they're essentially haploid plus one. And so two um, gametes would be produced with an extra chromosome in each one. And two gametes would be produced missing a chromosome. This can also happen during anaphase two of meiosis. Um, and this is where another non-disjunction event happens. But in this case, it's not the homologous pairs they did separate properly during anaphase one and they ended up on each side but then during anaphase two when the sister chromatids are supposed to separate and one goes to one side and one goes to the other that might not happen and so in this case you'd end up with one sex cell with that extra pair and then you'd have one sex cell missing one but for the one that did make it through anaphase one properly you would get two functional sex cells so in humans, the resulting gametes um, are either going to have more or fewer chromosomes. And if they are then combined into a zygote, that zygote is going to have more or fewer chromosomes. And so in this particular case here, this gamete has one extra chromosome. So when it fuses with a, uh, another sex cell, there's going to be two of these. Uh, in this case, it's from the egg. So it's maternal chromosomes instead of just one. Um, so this, this is a diploid zygote with one extra chromosome. So fertilization after non-disjunction results on a zygote with a different number of chromosomes, um, too many or too few. Monosomy is when the zygote has too few, so they're missing one of the chromosomes. Um, trisomy is where they have an extra one. And so instead of having a, a total of 46, which is the 23 pairs, but they've got that one extra um, half of the uh, homologous pair. So, so um, ending up with that one extra. So when, in, when uh, we look at our pairs, we're going to have 46 plus that, that one extra one that has inherited um, for one of the particular chromosomes. So quick definition, um, autosome is essentially all the chromosomes except for the sex chromosomes. So that is our 22 pairs. And then we have our one pair of allosome or sex chromosomes. And so that's gonna give us our 23. So non-disjunction disorders that we have seen, um, there, there's a number of different ones, but a, a more common one is trisomy 21, also known as Down syndrome. And here's a, a karyotype of an individual who has Down syndrome. And we can see that the reason why they call it trisomy 21 is because the 21st chromosome right here, um, instead of having two chromosomes, a homologous pair, they actually have three of these chromosomes. So trisomy 21. So this uh, non-disjunction event could happen with any chromosomes, creating a trisomy of any number of the chromosomes. However, most of them are fatal and the zygote isn't going to survive for very long. Um, however, certain chromosomes, 8, 9, 13, 18, 21, 22, 
are able to survive, uh, at least until birth. And uh, if it's trisomy 21 or 18, the individual will be able to survive well past birth. Um, all monosomies except Turner syndrome are going to be fatal. And so anytime a chromosome is actually missing, that genetic information isn't there. And so that zygote is not going to survive, uh, except for this one called the Turner syndrome that we'll look at right now. So abnormal number of sex chromosomes, this non-disjunction event particularly happens with the X or the Y chromosomes. So it's going to produce gametes with extra or missing X or Y chromosomes. And so this unusual number of chromosomes does not upset the genetic balance as much. There's not as many important um, genes on the X and specifically the Y chromosome as with some of the other chromosomes. And so the offspring are much more likely to survive this non-disjunction event. So here's an example of a uh, normal meiosis for the X chromosome. And so you end up with the uh, two X chromosomes getting divided properly and you end up with four haploid cells. But if the non-disjunction event happens again during anaphase one, um, we're gonna end up with two of these gametes that are not um, haploid. They're, they're gonna have these, these two um, sets of chromosomes in them. And then with, uh, if it happens during anaphase two, and so in this case here, uh, we got through anaphase one properly, but then in this case, this guy did not divide properly and you end up with both of the sister chromatids showing up in one of the sex cells. And so if any of these um, abnormal sex cells are used to create a zygote, the number of sex cells in that zygote will be different um, from what it is normally. So if the gametes that are used to create the zygote um, end up producing a zygote with um, two X chromosomes and one Y chromosome, that's called Klinefelter syndrome, or it could have two Y chromosomes and one X, three X chromosomes would also be possible, or a single X chromosome um, could also be possible. Um, a single Y chromosome would not survive. And so these have different names and uh, the chances of them happening are not particularly small, so they do happen. And again, these are, are non-fatal mutations, and so the, the bearer of these genetic traits is able to survive. So mosaicism is a non-disjunction event that occurs during mitosis, and this is, is relatively common, um, but very rarely would you notice it if it did happen unless the outcome actually affected the phenotype or the visible traits of the individual. Um, if it happens early in development, then you could actually have parts of the individual organism's body um, that are going to be showing different um, reading different DNA, because as their cells divide, some of the cells may end up with certain chromosomes that the other ones do not have, and therefore the traits that they read from those chromosomes are gonna be different as well. So essentially different parts of their body would be reading different genetic information. Um, so if you have the formation of a zygote, that is a perfectly normal zygote, um, but as it's dividing, if one of these cells undergoes a non-disjunction event, then the outcome from that cells would also be missing those chromosomes or, or having those extra chromosomes. And so they may end up showing different traits than the other cells around them. So calico cats kind of demonstrate something similar to this. Um, this is a gene that is expressed on the X chromosome of these cats. And essentially the calico coloring, so this, this variety of, of colors within the cat um, is due to the X chromosome being turned off in certain parts of their body. And so particular parts of their body end up reading one of the X chromosomes or the other one. So you end up with this variety of colorings within their body. You don't see this with males because they don't have two X chromosomes. So they would only read. So if you looked at the litter of kittens and you say, okay, those ones there have only one coloring. Um, then you, you could say, okay, well, that's, that's probably a male who only has the one X chromosome. So it's only able to read the genetic information from that one chromosome. But then if you see other ones that have this calico coloring or this, this random blotchy patterning prints, you've got some red fur and some white fur and some black fur. Um, what that is, is you'd know that that's probably a female cat because it has two X chromosomes and depending on where the cells are in their body, they may be reading information from one of the X chromosomes or from the others. So you wouldn't see this with a male cat unless there are, have been some calico male cats, which, which would be quite rare. But if the male 
cat came from a non-disjunction event, or if it's it's a zygote came from gametes that went through a non-disjunction event that had two X chromosomes on it, then it would be able to be a male cat and have two X chromosomes that would allow it to have different colorings of different parts of the body as it read information from one of the X chromosomes or from the other. Chimeras are uh, another sort of um, mixing of genetic information. And, and with during sexual reproduction, it's quite often that a zygote can essentially, um, a single zygote can um, split and you end up with twins or with triplets, um, more than one individual coming from one zygote. Um, occasionally, the reverse happens. So there could be paternal twins, so two separate zygotes that actually fuse together to create a single organism that is essentially made up of two different genotypes. And so um, this can happen in the lab where they actually intentionally fuse the um, genetic information from essentially two different zygotes. So you could take, imagine a zygote that makes a mouse that looks like that and a zygote that makes a mouse that looks like that, and you fuse them together early in development and they would grow and create one single individual who essentially has two genomes and the different parts in their body may be reading those different genomes uh, at different times. So kind of like the calico cats, but instead of having an X chromosome and another X chromosome, they actually have two whole distinct genomes in two whole distinct cells. Um, and technically, bone marrow recipients, they're, they're kind of like a genetic chimera um, in that they have other people's cells inside their bones that are producing new blood for them. Um, and that new blood, those new blood cells, would have the DNA of the donor bone marrow. Parental testing involving um, this uh, looking for uh, difference in genetics, genetic testing can be done prior to birth and it can, it can be used to detect these genetic abnormalities. Um, and so there's a couple of different types of them. Chronic villus sampling, where they actually take cells um, from around the embryo and then they can look at the genetic information of those cells. Amniocentesis, which removes cells from the fluid that's around the fetus. Um, so they're, they're um, able to get some of the cells from there and able to run genetic tests on those cells. Um, multiple marker screening is where they use maternal blood and they look for the products of cells. And so they're looking as, essentially at uh, different hormones, not the genetics itself, but some of the products of what might happen if the certain genetics are being produced. And a more interesting one is um, it's called fetal mycochimerism. And so essentially, while the fetus is developing in the mother, some of its cells will end up in her bloodstream and survive in her bloodstream. Um, and so they can actually take a blood sample from the mother and find those cells that are from the fetus, and then they can run the genetic tests on them as well.